give one. First passage of scripture will be found in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The next passage of scripture is found in First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in word and in doctrine. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Holy Father, we come, we come in Jesus' name today. We want to give thanks, give glory, give honor, give praise unto your holy name. Holy Father, we come before your presence today. We want to just say thank you for the members that make up the St. Paul Church family. We thank you for every parishioner today. We, as we look to you, God, we Thank you for that. Thank you for their hearts. Because as we reminisce about this congregation, we thank you that they have a heart to to do your will, Lord God. A heart to do your way, God. A heart to serve and worship you in spirit and in truth. Because of their hearts today, we find ourselves here today, God, to we come to honor the gift that you placed in our midst, Lord God. Father God, if we look to you today, God, we thank you today, God, that you uh, you reign as, as sovereign rule and Lord in our lives. Because of that, God, we find ourselves here today being grateful and thankful for all you're doing in the life of this assembly. We want to honor you and glorify your name, Holy Father. Holy Father, we look to you, God. We, as we glean to your scripture, we think about you, your servant John, who out there preaching in the wilderness. And Father, as John was preaching in the wilderness, we recognize, God, that, Father, that you, you honored John. And Holy Father, because you honored John, Lord God, today we come to honor your servant today. Holy Father, we come before your presence today, Lord God, we think about your word in Jeremiah chapter 3 and 15. Father, we recognize God as we look at the life with John, the only way that John could please you was doing your will. Father, we honor this gift that you placed in our midst, God. We thank you for the congregation who thought it not robbery and set aside a time to honor the gift you placed in our midst today. And Holy Father, we come today, Lord God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, today, Lord God, that you would be glorified today, God, in this service. I pray, God, that everything done and said in this service will be pleasing and well-pleasing in your sight today, Lord God. We lift this service before you, God, and we ask through the power of Jesus Christ that you would have your way today, God. Reign, rule, reign in, in, in this service as you would have it to be, God. And, Father, we're going to be ever so careful to give you all the glory. We're going to give you all the praise, all the honor, because it belongs to you, Lord God. So, Lord God, do what you want to do in this service. We're going to worship you in spirit and in truth. All because we love you and we praise you. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Come on and give God some glory. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be worshipped. Thank you, Pastor, First Lady, Miss Susan. Thank you, Heavenly Father, God, that we're here today, God. Come on, don't stop the praise. Come on, worship God this morning. He's worthy to be praised. He's not fit that you woke up this morning. You opened up your eyes. You came out here. 
into this parking lot. God, we thank you right now, God. Hallelujah, Lord. You the great I am, oh God, Elohim, oh God. We thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. God, God abides in the praises of his people. Don't let, don't sit down on him because you're in that car. Come on and praise God this morning. Hook that horn. Use your instrument. Use your voice. Praise God. Open up the portals of heaven today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that he is our everything, that he is our strength. We give him glory today. We thank you for our gift of Pastor Featherstone, God. And as we worship you today, God, we want your ear to be inclined to your children. And God, for you to be glorified in this place, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Yeah, 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 yeah. Strength like no.
means I have access to the Father. Keep saying, and you are, you are my strength. That I can go before him. The throne of grace is powerful. The throne of grace is where you should be. The throne of grace is where you have a privilege. It reaches. opportunity to stand before you all this morning. I am humbled. I was humbled when I was asked to uh, do this, but at the same time, I'm honored to stand here on this occasion as we celebrate our pastor and our first lady. Make sure I get this right. 42 years in ministry and 34 here. Is that right? 34? And I'm just blessed that I've been a part of the last team. not going to worry your patience too long today, I hope. Um, but if you would, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. That song that was just sung is so fitting for this message. You are my strength. Thank God he reaches back to us. Jeremiah chapter 17, and we're going to uh, read verses 7 and 8. I'll be reading from the uh, New King James Version. And it reads, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. And will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. So for a topic today, or a thought today, just want to use uh, reaching for God. Amen. <clears throat> That's all right, Deb. Each of our lives presents unique challenges that sometimes leaves us in positions where we feel we have given all we can and have nothing left to give. Sometimes we feel exhausted and we feel that all means of finding answers or solutions to the issues that create these challenges are nowhere to be found. It is at that, when that point is reached, the thought of giving up or giving in begins to settle in our spirits. Sometimes we just fall into a place of complacency or maybe even find ourselves turning to other things or those people, those idols that fill the voids in our life. In this message today, I want to encourage somebody to keep reaching for God. 
So as I was putting this message together, I was reminded of my mother. And when we were coming up, she uh, always placed these uh, motivational messages in our bathroom. And she always placed them in strategic places. And so as I was writing this message, I, re I was reminded of a, uh, a sign that she had in the bathroom. It was placed strategically. And there was a large hand reaching through the clouds. Mm. And below that was an inscription that read, reach up as far as you can and God will reach back to you. Mm. As I look back, that, uh, that message, I feel my parents put that in our bathroom to remind us, it was four of us, four boys, <laughs> reminded us that no matter what adversity we face, what challenges that we face, for us to keep reaching for God, keep looking to and seeking God. When I moved out and, and went on to college, I took that sign with me. I hung it in my dorm room. When I moved out of my dorm room and into an apartment, I hung it in my apartment. Today, that sign, that very sign, still hangs in my children's bathroom. Mm. It is strategically placed so every time they walk in it, they're reminded mm, 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 mm. to keep reaching up and God will reach back to them. Because if we look around today, what all our children are faced with, they need that encouragement to keep seeking God, keep reaching out to God. We all need that encouragement to keep reaching out for God. Because my parents knew that we would face adversity. We would face challenges in this life. And so I know my children will face challenges in this life. And I want to encourage them to keep reaching for God. And I want them to understand that God has placed them in a position that all they have to do is reach out to God. And they will be blessed. They will be fruitful if they just keep reaching I want to say to each one of you today, yes, God has pl planted you right where he needs you, but there's still some work for you to do. In our text, we see that God has convicted Judah for their sin of idolatry and condemned them to captivity. Now, this conviction comes after Judah continued to follow, serve, and worship other gods. They failed to follow the word of God and have become worse than their ancestors. Their sin and perversity was so deeply ingrained in their hearts, the Bible says that it was etched in their hearts with a pen of iron. Their hearts were so hardened that the Bible says that their sin, again, was in, in, engraved with an iron pen. And because of this, Judah was cursed. And God says, any man who gets his strength from flesh and turns their heart from God and does not put his confidence in him is cursed. He then turns his focus to those who trust or put their full confidence in God. God says that this one is blessed because he puts his full confidence in him. So what does it mean to put our full confidence in God? It means that one must put all of their faith, all of their trust, and all of their belief in him. Throughout the Bible, there are many times that man is compared to a tree. For example, Psalms 1 and 3. The psalmist says, and this psalm is very similar to what I just read in Jeremiah. It says, The blessed is the man, the one who delights in the law of the Lord, for he is like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and it shall prosper in whatever it does. Here God says that those that put their confidence in him is like a tree planted by the waters. Now, a few things I want you to notice about both of these passages of scripture. The tree is not planted in the water. And it does not appear to be planted right next to the water. But instead, the tree is planted in proximity of the water. Now, this tree in Jeremiah is a mature tree. If you go back, you notice that God talked about those that turned their, he talked about Judah and them turning their back on him. And he's and likened them as a shrub, yeah. a baby tree, a shrub in the desert. But this tree is planted. This tree is mature. This tree is ready to produce fruit. And God has planted this tree in proximity of the water. So there's still something that this tree must do. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want you to notice is the waters, the rivers, or streams in both these passages. It's plural. So what this tells me is that it represents the source that flows continuously 
to provide what the tree needs for strength, stability, and sustainability. Again, this, this word is plural, and so it means that the, the water, the source, is fruitful. It's all around. All the tree has to do is reach out for it. God has planted each one of us in a position that we may be fruitful by receiving everything that we need from him. Yes, we are placed in proximity of the source, and all we must do is put our full faith, our full trust and confidence in him. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know, God says, I know the plans I have for you, the plans for you to prosper, plans to not harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. We do not know what God's plans are for us, but he knows. And he places us in a position to be in line with his plans. Too often, we put our plans in the forefront. Come on now. And when we, when we do that, and we cannot find success, we ask, Lord, why? <laughs> Lord, where are you? Mm. Lord, where were you? Sure. And God is saying, I'm right here. Right. Just reach out to me. Right. Instead of reaching out to God, we reach out to our friends. We reach out to social media, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Again, God is saying, I have placed you in a position to be blessed, to overcome obstacles, and to be fruitful. But there is still work that you must do. So this tree, we read, it, it sends, it stretches its roots. That is a verb. That is an action. It's continuous. This tree has to continue to do that. So for us to reach out to God, then we must act. A-C-T, act. First, we have to acknowledge God as the true source of our needs. Then we must commit to seeking the source intently. And finally, we must tap into the source to receive its benefits. Now, if you imagine this tree that is near the stream, it is planted, rooted into the ground, but it still has needs so that it can be productive or fulfill its purpose. Because the tree knows it has needs and has to seek the source to provide its needs, the tree must first acknowledge the source from which it receives its needs. This means the tree must know where it gets its needs, then trust the source or have confidence in it so that it may put its trust in it. Psalms 121 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. Now, as I studied this passage of scripture, reading some commentaries, there's some scholars that say that this, uh, so this psalm was written by, written by uh, a, some, one at Pilgrims or one at Journeys. But then there's others that say it, it's written by David. So I wondered, and I just imagine that David had to look to the hills. He had to look to the place where he had experienced some tough times and he had to remember God as his source. We know that David spent a lot of times in the caves, in the, in the hills. And if you go back and you look at that scripture, in Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. That is a statement. I will lift up my eyes with, to the hills. And so I imagine David then asked the question. The next line is a question. From where does my help come from? Mm -hmm. And then he acknowledges God and says, my help comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because he knew God was the source that brought him through the hills and planted him where he is, he did not seek any help from anywhere else. But he acknowledges the source, the one that provides all that he needs. Because David acknowledges God as his source, he now has confidence and trust in God to supply all that he needs. Have you acknowledged God as your true source today? Is your source your material things? Is it your job? Is it your friend or acquaintances? Is it your own thoughts and motives? If God is your source, you must acknowledge him as such and then put all your trust and confidence in him. Now, after the tree has acknowledged the waters as its flowing source, the tree must now commit to seeking the source of its needs. The tree must reach for the source. Verse 8 Jeremiah chapter 17 tells us that this tree spreads out its roots by the water. 
The tree not only recognizes where to receive what is needed, but the tree now acts. It reaches out to that source. Notice the tree did not reach for anything other than the true source of its strength. Many times we say that we acknowledge God. We say we trust him and declare that he is all that we need. But when trouble comes, we reach for everyone else or everything else, but fail to reach out to God. We are searching for solutions to problems, but seek out what we believe is the easy and comfortable quick fix to our problems. When we are reaching out to God, it's a continuous thing. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's not just a Wednesday Bible study thing. But it's an everyday thing to reach out, recognize, acknowledge God, and reach out to him. Reaching out to God was never meant to be easy. And it's not going to be easy. Verse 8 goes on to say that the tree does not fear when heat comes. When heat comes. The heat is coming. So we must not fear when the heat comes if we continue to reach out to God. Amen. These past two years, we have dealt with a pandemic. During the pandemic, you would think that many people would begin to look around and reach out to God. But instead, crime rates are higher than they ever been. We're experiencing all kinds of problems. Yes. Yes. You go to the grocery store today, the shelves about empty. There's a supply issue. Mm -hmm. People won't go back to work. Mm. We have all kinds of problems that are going on now. But what we need to do is put our focus on God, acknowledge him, and reach out mm. to God. Now again, the tree does not fear when heat comes. This tells me that the tree runs through some tough times while reaching for the source. While the tree is reaching out or spreading its time or its roots, the roots may run into some difficulties. So if you would imagine with me this tree and the roots that are down in the ground, these roots encounter different types of soil, some good soil, some hard soil, some clay, some stony soil. But the tree keeps reaching. These places get tough for the roots to penetrate. But the tree doesn't stop because it runs into an obstacle. Those roots, they find a way over, under, or around the obstacle to reach the source. Yeah. The tree never ceases to reach. It continues to send its roots towards the source of its need, no matter the adversity. Very familiar scripture. And we're talking about tapping into God. In Luke chapter, actually Mark chapter 5. But also in Luke chapter 8, Jesus is met by a synagogue leader, leader, Jairus, who asked him to come to his home to heal his daughter. Now, Jesus and his disciples had just returned back to Galilee, and they're getting out of the boat. They're met, with, met by Jairus. They come to his home to heal his daughter. <clears throat> and as Jesus starts towards Jairus' home, the Bible talks about a woman who was standing there. So I liken this woman as a tree. She is planted right where God wants her to be. And she recognizes Jesus. Yeah. Now, yeah. the scripture says that she heard about Jesus. I don't know when she heard about Jesus, but at some point she heard about Jesus. And now she's planted right there where Jesus gets off the boat. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine like David, this woman had to look to the hills. She had to look back 12 years that she suffered. She had to look back and look at how much she's lost, all the physicians that she's gone to, how she's been mistreated, ridiculed, all the obstacles that she's been through over a 12 year period. And she had to look to the hills and realize her help didn't come from the hills, but her help comes from the Lord. So I imagine this woman standing on the shore and she sees Jesus. So first she acknowledges Jesus that this is my source. Yeah, yeah. But then she begins to reach for the source. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus is going on his way to Jairus' home to heal his daughter. But she sees the source. She acknowledges the source. And now she's reaching for the source. Mm -hmm. the, Bible, the story goes on. The Bible says that she comes behind Jesus. And if you can imagine her walking and trying to catch up.
because Jesus is surrounded by this raucous crowd that's all around him. His disciples and this crowd are all around him going with Jesus. Now remember this, this woman, she's been ridiculed. She's had this uh, yeah, issue for yeah, 12 yeah, years. Yeah. So she really wasn't allowed to even be around people. So here she is, she sees, the, she sees the source flowing right by her. And she's reaching out to her, to him. And I can imagine her as she's trying to catch up to Jesus, trying to fight through the crowd to get to Jesus. I imagine she was bumped around a little bit, mm -hmm. shoved a little bit. Come on now. But she never lost sight or her focus of what she was trying to get to, her source. Come on now. I, I believe at a point that maybe she was shoved down, pushed down to the ground. But she didn't give up. She kept reaching for the source. As a matter of fact, she said, if I could just touch his clothes, his garments, or the hem of his garment. She, she not only reached, she's committed, she's reaching, but she got faith, she's trusting, she's believing. I believe she's knocked down and while she's crawling, trying to get to Jesus. I imagine that people are stumbling over. She may have been kicked intentionally or unintentionally, stepped on, shoved out of the way. But her roots, she's still reaching, trying to get to Jesus. Mm. My, 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 my. Still reaching, still trying to get to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing. There was nothing that was going to stand in her way. Now, Jesus is still moving on. He didn't stop and wait for her to get to him. He's still flowing and he's moving on. But she's still reaching, still believing. So God is saying to us today, I don't care what you're going through. You keep on reaching. Keep on reaching. Keep on trusting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this woman, she's reaching. And when she catches up to him, she touches the hem of his garment. Mm, 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 mm. Now the disciples are like, Jesus says, well, somebody touched me. And they're like, Jesus, all these people are around you. What do you mean somebody touched you? <laughs> but he felt the virtue leave him and into this woman. So what she's done now, she's been committed. And she was intentional in reaching God as her source. And when she got to the source, she tapped into the source to receive the power, the healing, the strength that she needed so that she could go on bearing fruit. Today, we too must put our confidence in the source and extend our reach with intention to tap into the source. Storms are going to come. Storms are going to come. When a storm comes and the wind's blowing, the trees are looking like they're about to fall. You know, I don't know who your power source is, Duke Power or whoever your source is, but there's times that you're connected to that source and when the storm comes, your power goes out. But I'm here to tell you today, if you tap into the power of God, you don't have to worry about your power going out. You got continuous power. Just keep reaching. Just like that sign my mom had in the bathroom. Reach as far as you can. You're intentional. God sees your heart. He knows your heart. He knows you're reaching. He knows you're giving it all you got. It is at that point that he's reaching back to you. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Mm. The Lord says, I search the heart. I examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. While we are in a time of experiencing effects from a pandemic and effects from other issues in this world, we don't have to worry about how we will get through any situation. We don't have to turn to look to other things to fill the void. We don't have to turn to look to other people to fill the void. But in the tough times of our life, we can have confidence in, reach for, and tap into God despite those challenges. Mm -hmm. We can be assured that our leaves will be green and we will never fail to bear fruit. I told you I was humbled to stand here today on this occasion because as I wrote this and I'm thinking about these trees, I think about our pastor. A pastor who has been after God's heart, mm -hmm. just like David. One who has remained, his leaves have remained green. He has not ceased from yielding fruit. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Because we have a pastor that keeps reaching. 
Now I know he's been through some challenges. 42 years, you're not telling me there have been challenges. Pastor, Miss Susan, that, there's been challenges. But we thank God that y'all kept reaching. So we can be assured that our leaves will be green and we will never fail to bear fruit. Another thing I, I, I observed when I studied the trees, and I did not know this until I was looking at trees. I've heard this before, but there's a saying that trees talk to each other. Mm -hmm. yep. So as I studied that, there's a system, mycorrhizal, and what that is is a mature tree. What the trees do is they talk to each other. So one tree, what it has received, the nutrients, the sugars, everything in that tree, that through the root system, that tree shares it with the next tree. Wow. Not only that, the tree sends messages to the other trees about dangers. Mm. So again, I thought about our pastor. <laughs> that is that tree. <laughs> and that is that system. Because what has he done for the 34 years he's been here? He has passed on those things. He's tapped into, reached, and got things from God. Mm -hmm. And he has taken those things. And he is talking to all of us, all of these trees out here, passing those things to you. Yeah. Not only passing yeah, those good yeah, things, yeah, yeah. but warning you about the dangers out now. here. So now. my question is, how many of us are taking heed yeah. to those yeah. warnings? Yeah. Yeah. How many of us have truly received what he has given us? <laughs> my, 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 my. The shared information and resources allow other trees to gleam and grow and allows trees to communicate about dangers. Again, our past has certainly been that tree, continues to yield fruit, and continues to share what God has given him with us. Now today we all should do self, a self-evaluation to determine the status of our tree. Have I truly acknowledged God as my source? Do I put my full faith and confidence in him? Or is my confidence in those things that have become idols in my life? Wow. Am I committed to reaching to the source with all that I have in me so that I may tap into the source and remain fruitful? Today is the day to put down idols mm. and turn your focus to the one true source of all your needs. Take inventory of yourselves today. Mm. And if you know that you have been reaching for other things, other people to fill your needs. I encourage you to just keep reaching for God. Reaching won't be easy all the time. The tree used in this scripture could have tried to make reaching easier by reaching across the surface of the ground and not <laughs> digging deep. But the tree, tree, the tree chose to be planted, be rooted, to reach underground. Can you imagine? It would have been easy to reach across the, the yeah, surface. Yeah, yeah. It's easy for us to reach across the sur surface. But we need to dig deep. How do we dig deep? <laughs> We've got to get into this. Not just read it on the surface, <laughs> but dig deep so that we can tap into the source. And I encourage you to keep digging this morning. Keep reaching. Because when you dig deep and reach for God, he sees you in the time of your troubles. And just like that sign that I talked about, he sees you in your troubles, he sees you reaching, he will reach back to you and restore you even in the midst of your adversity. Keep acknowledging God. Keep chasing after God. Keep tapping into God so you may always have sufficiency, stability, and sustainability in your life. Let's give God some praise this morning. I thank him for that word. I want to extend the invitation this morning. There's someone that hasn't received Christ this morning as your personal Savior. Today is the day to acknowledge Him. Today is the day to reach out to Him and know that He's reaching back to you. If there's someone that hasn't received Christ today, if you want to step out of your car, if you want to step down here, it's fine. Whatever makes you comfortable.
but then I want to send the invitation to maybe there's someone that you know you found yourself reaching in other directions not reaching to the source again maybe you're putting your faith and confidence in someone else maybe you're putting your faith and confidence like I talked about earlier in your social media looking for answers in all these other places remember God has said I'm right here so if you know you have been reaching somewhere else today acknowledge God reach out to him and tap into him there's someone that just needs prayer this morning you can come can't think of nobody else to pray for pray for me <laughs> I'll take it some situations we keep reaching a lot of us have dealt with issues from the pandemic God said keep reaching some have gone through some issues on your on your job throughout the week God said keep reaching don't stop reaching just like that woman I don't care what knocks you down what pushes you out of the way how much you get stepped on keep reaching Keep reaching. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this occasion, God, as we celebrate our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for all, God, that you have given him, God, and that he's taken, God, and given us, Father. Thank you for all the messages, Lord, all the encouragement the counseling, any, all that he's done, God. Everything that you put in him and he's given us, God. We thank you for it today, God. Lord, we pray for him, Miss Susan, his family. We pray, God, that you continue to bless them, Father. Continue to supply whatever their needs are, Lord. Ask God that you continue to lift them up. Lord, continue to guide them, Father. As there will still be challenges, Father God. But Lord, we know you will guide them, Lord, around those challenges. Lord, I pray for everyone who has come up today, God, for prayer. You know their needs, Father God. So, God, I pray, God, that you touch each and every one of them, Father God. Let them know, God, that you are their strength. And all they have to do, God, is continue to reach to you, Father. And Lord, we know that you are reaching back for us. Lord, continue to give us strength, Father, as we move through this pandemic, God, as we move through other issues, God, social issues, other issues, God, that have us so divided today, God. Help us, God, to put our focus on you. Lord, as we reach for you, God, we should be desperate for you, Father. The psalmist says, as the deer panting for water, so my soul is thirsty for God. We're thirsty for you, Lord. So help us, God, to keep reaching for you, Lord. Not just today, God. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday when we get on the line for Bible study, God. But every day. And Lord, I pray for our children, our youth, Father. So much going on today, God. Turn on the news. So many of our children are dying. And Lord, we're not even talking about the pandemic. We're talking about violence in our schools, shootings in our schools, innocent children, toddlers being killed by random gunfire. Lord, we pray, God, that you will keep your hands, your arms around our children, Father God. Continue to bless them, Father God. Our teenagers, Lord, we pray, God, that you continue to touch their hearts and their minds, Father God. There's so much God has got that gets in their minds today. So many temptations, so many things that 
become their idols, their cell phones, their social media. Help us, God. Us, God. The adults, the parents. Give them the knowledge. Give them the wisdom. Your wisdom, God. To guide them, Father God. Help us, Lord. Guide them, Lord, so that they will keep reaching for the source. Lord, we thank you, Father God. Lord, we just give you all the honor and glory. We thank you for this word today, God. I pray, God, that this word doesn't fall on stony ground today, but it falls on some good ground, Lord. That we take this word, and we don't just hold on to it for ourselves, Father God, but we take it and we share it with somebody else. There's somebody else that's going through something today. All of us know someone that's going through, but they don't know the source. Help us, God, guide them, direct them to the source. Again, God, we just thank you for all things. Again, God, we ask you to bless this ministry. Continue to bless this ministry, God. Thank you for keeping this ministry, God. There's so many, God, that still haven't gone back to worship. But Lord, we thank you, God, that we can still come together. We still outside, but we still can come together and worship. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we just be careful, God, to give you all the honor, the glory, and praise. And we thank you again. Let's be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.